Hi, in this lesson, I want us to look at uh, ice core data, the type of um, information we get from the ice cores that we've been studying about in previous lessons. For this lesson, you're going to need the ice core data handout. Uh, you'll also need a couple of coloring pencils um, and also uh, an electronic version, a PDF of uh, the questions that go with this data. Okay, let's go. We have two sets of data uh, to deal with. The first is from Antarctica, uh, from a place called the Dyer Plateau. This shows us quite a fine record. We need to try and relate uh, depth in this particular uh, core uh, to time. This particular core was taken in the late 1980s and we do have one um, uh, datable layer uh, within this. Um, the radioactive particle layer, which we know came from Russian uh, atomic tests that were taken, that took place in 1964. Okay, work through those questions using that graph. Remember the questions uh, are also available to you uh, on the PDF that's been sent out. The second part of this test then looks at uh, a different core, this time from Greenland. And we can see a record now uh, represented in a different way, this time using uh, time as our vertical axis. Have a go at those questions uh, either from uh, the slide you can see at the moment or again from the PDF. So now's the time to press pause, work through those questions on that worksheet, see what you can come up with. Okay then, let's start by me just showing you, more for the sake of interest than anything else, where the Dyer Plateau is uh, on the Antarctic Peninsula there. Let's have a look at some answers uh, to the first set of questions. So we had this uh, ice core from uh, Antarctica. You can see it's over a, a relatively short period of time. So we're getting a very detailed record of very recent climatic change. First of all, just to get to grips with the data, I asked it to shade in uh, the layers of snow that are formed in winter and those that are formed in summer. You should have something that looks a little bit like this. You can see that there's a seasonal variation in the um, depletion of uh, oxygen isotopes within this uh, within these different layers. If we start to label these up, uh, it's good to use the winter ones for this, you can of course, we've got two points that we know of, the most recent one and this radioactive layer. We end up with results that look a little bit like this. Notice how uh, as we get more recently, these uh, labels get a little further apart. We'll come back to that. I then ask you to work out the age of the bottom layer on this graph. You should find that's about 1953. Do we then have the number of winters and summers corresponding with the number of years that the snow was accumulating? Well, yes, by and large, but we can see that some of these records aren't particularly brilliant. Um, there are some bits that are a little bit confusing, particularly where we get some um, perhaps warmer winters. Um, 
for example, if we look at uh, the winter of 1988, um, you can see that that, yeah, that, where do you actually draw the line there? It, it, it can be a little bit tricky. If we look at the um, mean rate of snow accumulation in, in this area, we've got about 33 metres over 35 years. Uh, gives us about 94 centimetres a year, 0.94 metres. When we look at uh, the coldest winters, the ones with the um, lowest depletion of oxygen-18, it's about 1985, 1986. The warmest summers then, uh, we've got uh, several of them. Again, the 1980s seem to be a period of uh, quite big seasonal variation. We can see, though, that the layer thickness isn't uniform. These layers do seem to be getting closer to each other down towards the bottom of this uh, relatively shallow ice core. Now, it could be down to variations in the amount of snowfall, but perhaps because uh, they do seem to be getting um, thinner towards the base, it's a result of compaction as a result of uh, the weight of the overlying snow. Okay, if we think about uh, the answers to the, the second question then, this one about uh, the grip ice core in Greenland, which you can see is right in the middle of the Antarctic ice sheet. So we should get a, 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 a long continuous record of um, snow deposition. There. You can see that the time scale we're looking at for this core is much, much longer. We also have um, perhaps a different type of record as a result. If we try and read off uh, some of this data, we can see then that we have the percentage of uh, depletion of oxygen 18 today is about 3.5%. Uh, if we go back 13,000 years ago, it was about 4%. So as a result of this, the change in worldwide temperatures that there's been over this time period, is it warmed? And it didn't just warm gradually, we can see it warmed very rapidly, going from about 12,000 years ago up to um, about 10,000 years ago we're seeing uh, most of the climatic change over, uh, since, well, really since the end of the last glacial period. If we look at the world temperatures before uh, this time, so prior to 13,000 years ago, we can see that the temperature is cold. We're getting glacial conditions. There is fluctuation within that, but these conditions are glacial. The final question then sets a statement for us to evaluate that the fluctuations in climate recorded in uh, ice cores as a result of human industrial activity. Well, in this particular case, clearly they're not. These are too old. We're seeing uh, a cyclical change here, but we're also seeing um, a change over 50,000 years. If we think about our industrial history and when we actually started putting uh, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere on a, on a large scale, it's at most maybe 200 years. How far down our scale is this? How would this be represented on this particular graph? We can see that um, yeah, it's going to be a tiny, tiny proportion of this graph. Now, we always, always must take account of scales when we're um, interpreting this geological data. You need to take a great deal of care with it. Don't make any assumptions. Always read the graph carefully.
So, as we see the sunset uh, in Greenland, and we think about our conclusions, icicles do give us really good data about climate. Clearly, the changing uh, proportion of oxygen isotopes is related um, to the climate. We also remember get other data from these um, from these uh, cores. We get uh, dating evidence like the radioactive layer. We can also get dating evidence from um, volcanic ashes that we can find deposited. Remember, we can also link this to samples from the atmosphere. We can make a direct link because of the oxygen isotope data that we know is responsive to temperature with the uh, atmospheric composition that existed in the past and directly correlate them. We can come up with a very powerful evidence for um, the link between relatively small changes in uh, atmospheric carbon gases and the temperature changes that occur as a result. It's a key piece of evidence by going back into the geological past for present day uh, anthropogenic climatic change. What we need to do next is start thinking about some of the other fossil evidence that we might get for these climatic changes. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.